The year is 2023, and a once beloved game developer's reputation is in absolute freefall. Deserve. What was at one point probably the highest rated they developer the in the industry, fall. a studio that pumped out classic after classic, has now become the home of incomprehensible horror. Corporate greed, broken it's promises, a interesting botched train releases, rug, that's for sure. stolen breast milk. This oh God, is not the, the story milk. of Blizzard Entertainment. Their story went from good to bad to cursed. The year is 1991, and three guys have just graduated from the University of California. Alan Adham, Michael Morhaime, and Frank Pierce. They oh get boy. together to create a game development studio in Irvine called Silicon and Synapse. The name is deeply philosophical and well thought out, with Silicon wow. representing the building block of a computer and Synapse the building block of a brain. That is like extremely However, nerdy. Keep mistaking wow. The silicon part for the material in breast implants. <laughs> anyway, they spend the first few years porting games to different systems, but soon begin producing their own original games, with The Lost Vikings in 1992 and Rock and Roll Racing in 1993. Eventually, wow. they get sick of I didn't even know being about mixed their um breasts, the early so story. So they decide to switch things up, oh, changing gosh. their name to Chaos Studios. However, a company Chaos based in Florida teams. already has the trademark, and they're now asking for a hundred thousand dollars. Oof. Hmm. They then decide to change the studio's name to Ogre Studios. Man, but they went by a lot of different names they're back in the by day. A holding company for a few million dollars, and turns out their new owners aren't a fan of the new name. Okay, so they flip <laughs> through a dictionary, and oh my God, there it is. In 1994, oh. <laughs> Blizzard releases their first self-published title, a real-time strategy Blizzard was the fourth the name they had? Oh my god. And it's an instant success. It's one of the earliest real-time strategy games to hit shelves, and it's a blast. It All also right. has a modem and Doing good. player, meaning people can get together and go ham. And the game does well, selling 100,000 copies in the wow, first year. Wow, wow, they're on the upturn the here. Time, Blizzard Entertainment is profitable. They follow it up with Warcraft 2 in 1995. It's another home run. Critically acclaimed, and now selling over a million copies in its first year. Wow, nice. wow! It's now 1996, and a company called Condor It's only Games been a few years at this point. That's pretty fire! Game, Diablo. Blizzard has a little look, and they like. So they buy them, and rename them Blizzard North. Oh, they bought them Blizzard out. Notices. I didn't know that. I didn't know Warcraft that's how they got Diablo. Warcraft 2 picked up a lasting online player base, mostly through third-party networks that connected players over this magic new thing called the internet. So oh, they man. To make Battle.net. Its original functionality is very simple, with the ability for players to chat to each other and search for a match. But on December 31st, 1996, it launches alongside Diablo, and people log on and play. Diablo is a massive hit, also selling over a million copies within its first year. Wow, in they had so many Blizzard things back to back that they were RTS good at. Like they had space. so many wins, it sells so many separate things that they e scene. that they Diablo did, two different games that like just popped off. Smash hit. I didn't it realize it was back to back. Million sales by the end of the year, becoming the fastest selling PC game of all time. Wow. In 2002, Warcraft is back. And now it has an extra dimension. I never realized Warcraft also how impactful Diablo was, the month, original at the immediately time. Immediately becoming the new fastest selling PC game. It also releases with a campaign editor, which spawns a series of popular mods like Defense of the Ancients. And after its expansion in 2003, it's all hands on deck for Blizzard's next project. The year is 2000. I can't believe how many like successes. To release I know I said that, but like yet. the amount of things They've that they just MMOs like EverQuest were getting were colossal in early hand. on. And after 60 million dollars and five years of work, oh it's my goodness, finally nearing release. And in November 2004, World of Warcraft launches. Let's and it go! And takes the world by storm, smashing even Blizzard's forecasts. There are so many players trying to log on in the first week that their servers have a complete meltdown, with server queues reaching the thousands. Get past the queues and actually into a game. Well, even even in this day and age, that's a, that's a common a thing still. <laughs> meaning you're now back on that queue screen. <laughs> After the initial server problems are ironed out and people can actually play, 
The game Yippee. sucks people in on mass. Fans are very enthusiastic. Leroy! It hoovers oh up boy, the Leroy right Jenkins era. The ton boomer of memes are a go. Reaching almost 6 million sales by the end Holy of Holy crap! Year. World of Warcraft isn't like your average game, though. Instead of simply buying a copy, players have to pay a $15 monthly subscription. Oh, right, yeah. Well. It's because Six now they have a subscription model. Every month. Now they're Blizzard really making bank. Because now Everyone they're not buying it once. And it's ads they're my, to they're buying it monthly. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this game. And others like Vin Diesel. Oh, yeah, William and then they had all these celebrity Cameron, endorsements. Mila Kunis and Dave Chappelle announced their addictions in various interviews. World of Warcraft is everywhere. World of Warcraft yeah, there was even the South the Park episode. And then there was all that media coverage of how, like, that would World of Warcraft was, like, satanic and, and stuff like that. Future games. Fans could also there was all the that media of, like, being terrified of World of Warcraft is, like, an addiction. At this point, Blizzard is among the all-time greats of gaming. Every game, a smash hit. They could do no wrong. I was gonna say, they haven't really had anything fail. But first... Flying a plane is easy. Just get in, flip a few switches, and you're off. Like, that's the impressive part of it, is like, I don't think anybody would have. easier, and a ton of fun. Like, had anything against them if one of their projects or one of their games flopped, right? All the way to the sky. But, like, every single one of them did well. is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game. That's a lot of success! Just look at all those things. There's more than 2,000 of them. Someone that likes the small and agile, or a fan of the more voluptuous. Well, War Thunder has something for everyone. The game is deep indeed, with a dynamic damage system that damages individual components and a huge customization system. Hundreds Big of tanks camos, blowing things up. Emblems, and over a century War Thunder of is fun. I haven't played it before. And their models. I know a lot of people who enjoy it though. To 100 percent The Lego Yoda Death Scream, enjoy, eleven out of ten. <laughs> And you can play on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC true, for true. free. Fancy a large bonus pack with all this stuff? Just sign up through the link in the description or the pinned comments below. Uh oh. <laughs> the year is now 2006. Something World is of looming. Warcraft has almost 10 million active subscribers and is bringing in a ton of money. So naturally, it had turned a few heads. One of those heads, Bobby Kotick. Oh no. CEO oh, of speaking Activision. of this guy, did you guys know that uh, Bobby is trying to uh, buy TikTok? Apparently he wants to be the uh, owner of TikTok right now. I'm sure that would go well. I mean, if you think about it, the people that don't like TikTok, you know, there's so many people who don't enjoy TikTok, they should probably just give it to him. He has a really good track record. I mean, TikTok would be obliterated faster than, you know, it just being banned. I mean, it sounds like a good plan. Now, in 2006, Activision had made good tracks in just about every genre of games, except one. Uh oh. And one that was now booming the MMO. With Warcraft currently bringing in over a billion dollars a year in subscriptions alone, he's interested. Now, at this point, oh Blizzard boy. has changed hands numerous times and is now owned by a company called Vivendi. So Kotick approaches Vivendi with a proposition. Vivendi receives money. Activision receives Blizzard. However, Vivendi says no. Instead, oh, rejected. Vivendi offers to merge their gaming subdivision with Activision, with Vivendi owning a majority share in the resulting company. And after a brief hesitation from Kotick, in 2008, the deal closes. Activision Blizzard opens well, its doors with Kotick as CEO, and Activision and Blizzard. I'm sure now it'll be fine since it's uh, changed hands Blizzard so many times, right? I'm sure it'll be just fine. And keep their CEO, what could go wrong? Michael Morhaim. It's now 2010, and Blizzard has gone from just under 500 employees before the launch of World of Warcraft to now over 4,600. Oh my God! I didn't realize they had the so many people working there. In July. And the third major Warcraft expansion, Cataclysm, in December. Now these launches were not small. Warcraft had been hitting peak after peak of players. I knew that like their games were growing, but I didn't realize how much they expanded. Like people working for them. That's crazy. So sizable. 
but Blizzard currently has a problem. Their forums, they're a little bit toxic. Blizzard <laughs> has a big team of moderators, uh -oh. but according to them, this still wasn't enough. So behind the scenes, they get brainstorming. And someone You mean has people in forums idea. are toxic? How about we just force everyone that posts on our forums to use their real first and last name? Yeah, what oh my god. And in July 2000 I can't believe that was a thing that somebody unfailed. really thought of that and proposed that absolutely and thought it was a good idea. So in an attempt to sell the idea to players, Blizzard's community manager posts his full name on the forum. See guys, <laughs> it's fine. But almost <laughs> instantly, people descend on the forum and get to work. And I was going to say, minutes, they find and publish right, his guinea pig. address, phone number, age, Facebook, family names, and a list of his favorite music and movies. Wow. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. And after Turns just out a few days is of bad. being announced, Real ID is scrapped entirely. By 2009, Thank goodness, the like, that was mod, insane. Defense of the Ancients had gained a significant following and had even spawned a whole new genre of games. MOBAs. For much of that time, Blizzard had paid little attention to the mod or the game, <laughs> but the success of a recently launched League of Legends could no longer be ignored. I was and gonna Blizzard say, incoming League in, of Legends, you're not gonna be able to ignore that one. one. Titled Blizzard Dota. Around the same time, and Valve wants to make their own MOBA. That oh hired the my head god, of the can you guys- Dota mod, oh. snapped up the Dota trademark, and they're calling their new game Dota 2. Blizzard okay, okay. is- Furious. Oh no. <laughs> so in 2012, they file a statement of opposition, arguing that the name Defense of the Ancients was associated exclusively with Warcraft. Due to I just think it's a horrible idea editor. that Blizzard However, really wanted this to like the mobile issues. market. See, the mod was created in Warcraft 3's map editor, but that map editor had no specific terms and conditions on ownership of said maps, IP, and concepts. They end Oof. up settling out of court a few months after, with Valve getting the commercial rights to the term Dota, and Dota 2 releases in 2012. It's massively successful, and goes on to be an esports giant. Blizzard gets non-commercial use of the title for its community, and renames Blizzard Dota to Heroes of the Storm, Ugh. which releases in 2015. Which was a and great game! Everyone later. loved that! Blizzard would change its licensing Ooh. agreements for all future games to include their ownership of player-created maps in an attempt to avoid this ever happening again. It's 2012, and the massively anticipated sequel to Diablo 2 is looking like it's releasing this year. Its development had been a bit rocky, with its dev team, Blizzard North, being canned in 2005, <gasps> along with their version of the game. But on the 15th of May 2012, Here we go. the rebooted Diablo 3 launches. The game is horrendous. For one, its launch is horrific. The game is, is this where they only. started doing reboots of their old games? Like, is Diablo 3 kind of their start of, like, reselling things that they already sold in order to try to capitalize to on the uh, nostalgia? <laughs> What's worse, there's no queue system in place, so you have to manually retry every minute. Uh, there's not a manual queue system! This issue takes over a week <laughs> to fix. Then there's the auction house. Here... I love this. And sold using your I feel like Blizzard cards. does Activision Blizzard gets impressively rich, bad things gets obliterated. that I would have never expected. Game I'm surprised every time. Non-existent. However, the game sells almost 4 million copies in its first 24 hours. Holy and crap! And over time, slowly makes a turnaround. In 2014, wow. the real money auction house is closed, and Blizzard launches Reaper of Souls, an add-on praised almost unanimously. They're ready to make a second add-on to the game, but management says no. Apparently, executives see the game as a massive failure and demand devs jump ship. Oh! <laughs> oh no! The year is now 2015. The past 10 years had seen massive expansions to Warcraft, including controversial changes to the game and its mechanics. And player numbers reflect that, now yep. being in steep decline. A growing number of players long to go back to the days of vanilla. Version 1 of the game, back in 2004. One fan even floats the idea to Blizzard themselves at BlizzCon 2013. Here's how that goes. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions? Didn't they think he was stupid? Then? Originally, when he came up with that? No. Yeah. Okay then, we'll just make one ourselves. 
and the fan made mysterious oh. vanilla server goes online in February 2015, running version 1.12, a month after the original launch. It's not long before the server gets massively popular, with almost a million accounts registered. It's also not long before Blizzard catches wind. Yeah, and Blizzard's the like, wait down. a minute. Their lawyers send them a cease and desist in 2016. Wait a minute. And the server is promptly shut down. Realizing they were completely wrong about Vanilla Warcraft, Blizzard do a full 180 and announce Yep, Warcraft they're like, oh, that's a lot of people. Never mind. We'll go do that. We'll just re release the stuff we already cooked before. Back in 2007, Blizzard started work on a huge MMO called Project Titan. It was described as a combination of Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, and The Sims. Hmm. What is this development project? Led nowhere, and six I haven't even heard later, of this one. The plug is pulled. Oh, never mind. A massive failure on Blizzard's that part. That would be why. <laughs> and a major internal I understand now why I've never However, heard of it. <laughs> the team behind it would attempt to rework the remains of the story and assets into another project. And in 2016, Overwatch. Oh, and that stemmed Overwatch, so a failed project that they kind of like redid it's was Overwatch. Wow. The board and massively popular, quickly becoming one of the most popular esports titles on the market. That, paired with their genre pioneer and card game Hearthstone back in 2014. Man, I actually used to play Hearthstone and plays, like it and Blizzard is looking for a time. Strong. However, there are problems brewing. See, now Overwatch it's garbage. I would never go back to it. Had in the Half the people there are bots too. It's and so they bad. Realize they don't have much to show off for BlizzCon 2018. So Blizzard rushes to it's find something to show like, off. It's also like based on um wow, like Got all it. the characters are so Fast forward to November 2018. And their presentation you got is tired of go. wow they then you're probably not gonna play hearthstone sure announcements here and there like a remastered warcraft 3 but they have one big announcement centerpiece oh. after six long years a brand new diablo oh no For oh baby everyone's like, favorite like, well, game it's diablo immortal everyone's so excited uh, for this shit. I, i'm amazed honestly it's this bad <laughs> this is fucking insane I don't even know like what to even say about this. Just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. <laughs> do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right? Oh my the god, that poor guy though. I feel bad for him because he was Firstly, just the, the person that had to say Blizzard, what they Chinese were doing, not the person who made that choice. Out. It's monetized to the tits. It costs over They half left that man out for the slaughter with that announcement, okay? And becomes the worst rated game ever on Metacritic. They were impressively out of touch. Fans are impressively Activision Blizzard not aware of what people want. See, back in 2013, Active Blizzard had bought back the remaining Vivendi shares for about $7 billion. Oh Billy my Day, gosh. And by extension, Bobby Kotick now had complete control of both Activision and Blizzard. Fast forward to 2018, and this creeping had only got worse. Because of the slowdown in game releases, Blizzard revenues are taking an absolute nosedive. <laughs> So active Blizzard I love, in. I love how this is all demonstrated with me. produce games at a faster pace. With Kotick apparently installing his own executives within Blizzard to ensure that happens. <laughs> apparently, tired of active Blizzard's meddling, Blizzard co-founder Mike Morhaim steps down as president and CEO. Yep. And leaves the seeing, company after seeing 27 a, uh, years of work. He's succeeded by dying project seeing the stuff he, they liked, you know, and by the in way, the industry going downhill. To do Time to go. Either you think you do, but you don't. And as soon as this happens, we accelerate. The company you know, stuff's getting bad when the OGs that made things good are leaving. The Storm's development team is outright annihilated. Its esports league is also scrapped right before its 2019 season. As a result, entire teams, commentators, and I mean, to be fair, just left I don't know why they made Heroes of the Storm. They never really put a lot into it, I feel like. Blizzard profits, they lay At off least not compared to their other games, you know? Almost 10% of the company. They begin rehiring the exact same jobs a couple of years later. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so going into 2019, people are not happy. But turns out, over on the other side of the world, and things are happening in Hong Kong. They're not good. Their government has proposed a bill that would give China more Oh yeah, this them, whole debacle. And that's not too popular. At the same time, Hong Kong native Blitz Chung is participating in Hearthstone's eSports League. He wins, 
and uses the post-game interview to show his support for the protests. But as soon as he says it, something yep. happens. See, I forgot about this for a little while. In China, and to keep that player base available to them, they have to bend over backwards for the Chinese government. So when this happens, they go scorched earth. They take the live stream down seconds yep, after he says it. Yep, because they're broadcasting it, with a you know, ban, and even confiscate his prize to money. more than you know the even U.S. The so now they gotta go by their rules and what's allowed it's as well. It's not long before the internet catches wind, and people are furious. <laughs> At one point, even Congress members have a go. After a few days of pressure, Jay Allen Brack eventually comes out. Everyone he came together to collectively share that choice. Blitz, China, <laughs> prize money back. He also says that all Blizzard's gamers came, came together to hold no hands to, to that tell that to Blizzard's right off. <laughs> to look seriously not cool. So they decide to go into BlizzCon 2019 with the big guns, announcing Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. Also, that Warcraft remaster they'd announced at the infamous 2018 BlizzCon is coming out next year. People were so this pumped. I remember all these announcements. Like, people were so Back excited. In 2015, Blizzard had set up a subdivision to remaster old games, the first of which would be Warcraft 3. And in January 2020, the highly anticipated remaster launches. And, oh boy, the game is beyond terrible. Oh no. <laughs> Before launch, Warcraft 3's advertising touted multiple new features. Over four hours of cinematic new cutscenes, more story, and new voice acting. And a complete campaign overhaul, changing the story to be more in line with the current Warcraft lore. It's so but weird how they made all these on, promises, out, but like they did not deliver. Like, did they just the make these promises before they even on the were working on these things? <laughs> There's also a ton of features from the original Warcraft 3 just outright missing. Here are a few of them. No ranked play. No. No profiles. Uh, no. No account stats. Uh, no. The no editing is so campaign. good. No. I'm sorry. No it's so good. No, no cross-region <laughs> play for custom games. Um, no. And no offline play. <laughs> no. It's possible after a few patches, but it's a little complicated. Also, it's also impressive how many times they've done the this with all these other games. Like, this is only one together. of the games that they, and like, up more promised something and then, like, did the not deliver. Game. Online matchmaking sucks and kicks you out all the time. This is without a way to reconnect, by the way. Graphics are worse than advertised. Treason! Have you lost your mind, Arthas? The new art direction is bad. Five of the game's maps are exactly the same as the original. And poor optimization, tons of crashes, and countless bugs. On top of all of that, Reforged is a mandatory update for everyone with the original game. Own the original with no intention of upgrading? Well, here's an additional 30 gigabytes of install size anyway. Oof. All of this amounts to one of the worst launches of a game in Also, history. yeah, so many like Within Blizzard games, release, you have to download like up at huge, out of 10 huge amounts. Metacritic. At the time, the <gasps> lowest Metacritic score in history, before being dethroned by Diablo Immortal. Oh my so god. Hordes of people pile Somehow in better than... Refunds. But wait, Somehow worse than Diablo Immortal, I mean, jeez. Sorry. You're not allowed. There's oh my so god, it was a 500 megabyte game. game. However, that Blizzard eventually came. And they made you download 30 gigabytes extra? Refunds. What the heck? The game is so bad that the entire classic games division at Blizzard is completely canned. You're fired. Get out of here. It also causes an upcoming Diablo 2 remake to be pushed back more than a year. So it's 2021, and Blizzard's reputation is currently abhorrent. But luckily, Overwatch 2 is just around the corner. Oh, hold on a sec. So they canned oh. an entire team. Turns out that over the last two years, the California kept Civil Rights anyway. Department had been investigating Activision Blizzard oh. due to multiple reports it's like, of sexual harassment. Like, man, maybe, maybe the staff. problem is it the employees? Maybe it's the uh, they had the people in charge of the decisions. Suits. I don't the know. The lawsuit states that sexual harassment, unwanted advances, and this was insane. Are within Blizzard, both before and after the merge. This includes the mention of an executive suite at 2013's BlizzCon. Oh god, this it's was so nice cursed. Place. In fact, Ooh. some employees literally dub it the Cosby Suite. Then there's the alleged underpaying of women and complaints was to abhorrent. both HR and the president repeatedly being ignored. But there was something else. The employees' breast milk. 
Oh, God. It's being stolen. Just why? Like, that is More than the most cursed part of it. Milk. When that part came out and people were talking about it, with a baby's face on it, if people weren't already face. paying attention day, to the fact I that there was a lawsuit going on, the the they day, now were because they were like, what in the absolute? The fallout is monumental. Why? It makes headlines industry wide. That was impressively cursed in a way that like everyone turned their head and was like, what the absolute? Also gone. Level designer on World of Warcraft, gone. Head of HR, definitely gone. Warcraft Lee, gone. Jay Allen, gone. Their chief legal, gone. The Wall Street Journal also alleges that Kotick knew about the whole thing, ignored it, and in some cases, even jumped in himself. He oh, most oh of the gosh. I did not. But eventually apologizes for a one-time instance where he left a voicemail threatening to have his assistant killed. That's Whoa. all fine. Water under the bridge. Sponsors Whoa. like T-Mobile, Coca-Cola, Kellogg, okay. IBM, and Pringles also all jump ship from the Overwatch esports league. And Activision Everyone's like, yeah, that's that's something. That is uh, that's very cursed. Overall, I don't I don't think you're a good ship to be on. Time to go. Activision Blizzard denies Time to most go. of the claims, and in June 2022, they investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. Oh. <laughs> The immediate reaction to Overwatch 2's announcement was one of confusion. Overwatch 1 was a monetized game with a thriving player base and regular updates. The kind of game that doesn't need a sequel. Like, what's so impressive is, game. like, how Overwatch well Blizzard did when the they started, how many, Overwatch like, different 20 things 20 they succeeded at. With us seeing no and new it's equally Overwatch how impressive how they years, managed to essentially fail. Killing the game. What? So many times in Overwatch a row. 2, like, Blizzard currently. reassures us it was all worth it. Just look at all this new stuff. 5v5 instead of 6v6. Shiny new graphics. Balancing changes. Map reworks. Six new maps. Three new heroes. More than 30 new skins. A new game mode. A battle pass and cosmetic shop. And most importantly, a PvE campaign. People had been longing for a story in the Overwatch universe, and now it was finally happening. Oh, and yeah. And it was ambitious. Blizzard shows <laughs> oh, up. Oh, yeah, campaign, baby. Along with hero missions. Talents and solo Overwatch. Can't hero. wait for that. Hundreds of missions at launch. I'm sure they won't miss a deliver. Truly replayable campaign. And don't worry, with Overwatch 2, Blizzard tells us they were redefining what a sequel really means. Overwatch 1 players get all the new maps, updates, and heroes that release in Overwatch 2, and both player bases can crossplay together. The purchase of Overwatch 2 essentially only granting the PVE mode. Okay, sold. Players are on board. 10th of March 2022, and Blizzard has an announcement. Look, we know we said hundreds of missions at launch, but, well, it's taking a while, so we're just going to release the game now without it, and add it later. I just then don't June, understand they why they said they were going to the do this and like did not do it at and all. Launching in October. But anyway... <laughs> On the 4th of October, 2022, it goes live. There are some issues. Events oh my are bad, gosh. tons of balancing issues. The looking for group feature is now just completely gone. But mainly, there's the new cosmetic system. In Overwatch yeah, 1, money. earning cosmetics was simple. Just play the game, They were like, we up, gotta, and we gotta do a second version. Skills. We gotta... <laughs> you could pay for them, but that was completely optional. We gotta do a second version two, fast. It doesn't matter Blizzard if it's not completed. It doesn't matter if it system, if it doesn't have what the, the people want. We'll put a number, a, 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 a two a on it and instead of a one, and, and there it'll be great. double the money. Let's you go. Can unlock skins for free through the challenge system, but there's a problem. It takes about eight months to get one. A simple character recolor takes almost four weeks. All of this means that it will take you around 327 years to get all the stuff you could get relatively oh quickly for free in Overwatch 1. Better It'll just playing. take you th also, like three or four lifetimes to get what you had season, before, guys. And then it's be fine. locked behind the later levels of the season pass. Your options are spend every minute of your life grinding for them or pay up. Give me money. In Overwatch 1, they were unlocked straight away. Fans don't take kindly to these changes. But then in May 2023, Blizzard comes out again. So, that PvP hero campaign that we've been advertising and was pretty much the sole reason we made the sequel in the first place, pretty much completely scrapped. 
<laughs> yeah, we're we're at, now that now that you guys missions. have been enjoying the game, by Instead, the way, we're not going to add in that thing some that we <laughs> missions around said was the seasons. entire point of making what? the what second the this was the second the version of Overwatch point for the sequel. Some of the remaining story content is still planned, with its first release on August 10th. But when it finally releases, it's only three missions. Blizzard is saying the game won't be getting any more story missions until at Oof. least 2024. They also add Overwatch 2 to it's Steam. It's 2024, it guys. Where's those new missions? New time, they, yeah. Surely they're going to deliver on them, right? <laughs> the year is now 2023, and Blizzard's reputation has never been worse. So when Diablo 4's release approaches, people are cautious. But on the 5th of June, the game launches. And it's surprisingly good. Oh. There are some issues here and there, but reviews are mostly positive, and over 10 million people log in and play. Yeah, I played that game. It's its fastest selling game of all time. I played it, it was my first Diablo, and I was years, having a good time. Are actually looking up. And I was having was a good service, time, except for the engine was garbage. Of content for the foreseeable future. Because it was loading in people's in inventories. A month later, and in July, everyone's inventory is loading into my PC it and is causing it to freeze. <laughs> and Reddit goes into a complete meltdown. Turns out, everything gets a big nerf, including the Metacritic score. The Sorcerer class, which was already underpowered, is hit especially hard. Then there's the enemies being overpowered, much less XP, a bunch of reskinned dungeons and enemies, barely any new content, and zero quality of They also changes. nerfed my class. I was playing Rogue Chat. One streamer on Twitch tries to explain why the season isn't that bad. Here's how that goes. This explosion is at... I actually just lost my hardcore character while trying to explain this to you. I changed my mind. I hate this season. And it seems Let's go! That creator is so battle good. Pass, battle pass, battle pass, battle pass, battle pass, battle pass. Speaking of which, it gives paid players 666 platinum. The cheapest item in the store is 800. Also, what's his name? I'm sorry, Chad. I can't, I can't remember his game. name right off they the top of my head, but he makes some really good Diablo content. Pass button. Right next to the button. Like if he says it's it's garbage, progression. Ooh, I believe it. That's kind of small. There's also no confirmation button, so if you want to check your progression and accidentally misclick. Darth microtransaction. Thank you. you. I it. think it said that on the there screen too, other but yeah. Confirmation buttons for other menu options in the game. So Blizzard's last few years haven't been great. Somehow Blizzard is now worse than Bethesda. It is so never <laughs> clear to people. With overreach from Activision, more fiscal concern, and most of the original talent having left the company, among other things. Maybe Blizzard wasn't the company it once was. And after a back to office mandate in 2023, even I more still think that's so needed. dumb that they wanted so people to talent, go back the to the workplace. They could not work from home anymore. For what content they can and can't get done. But with the acquisition from Microsoft, who's currently focusing on making good exclusives to slap on their Game Pass. Some fans are hopeful for change, but for now, I'm still bitter too. I'm still bitter from the whole situation. Bleak. The whole Diablo situation the epic really got me butthurt. War Thunder free to play PvP vehicle game. Sign up through the link in the description or comments for a big bonus pack. <laughs> it, it really, it really got me butthurt that they nerfed my um, my rogue, that I enjoyed playing. Mua, 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 mua.